welcome back to my hot kitchen. I'm Wendy and we're here to share with you delicious ideas to make for your sweetie on your next date night at home. Tonight we're going to take you down south for a little Cajun inspired cuisine. We're going to be having brie stuffed chicken with Cajun potato hash and creamed mustard greens and for an appetizer something I like to call brie saganaki. So let's get started by setting up the breading station. So you're going to need to have three stages, flour, beaten egg, and unseasoned breadcrumbs. Just want to get the egg beaten to a nice consistency. You want to beat it until you see that there's no more separate egg yolk and egg white. The breading station is going to be used for both the chicken and the saganaki. And we'll start by breading the saganaki first. So the first step for these little brie saganakis, you're going to need about two ounces of brie cut into little cute wedges with a nice little slice down the middle. And you just want to add a little bit of your favorite jelly. Whatever you have on hand is fantastic. This is a wonderful application for those strange little spicy apple jellies. Also works well with, like I say, anything you have on hand. I'm using raspberry jam. Just want to get it in there. Make a little cheese and jam sandwich, if you will. And then take the little wedges, roll them in the flour, dip in the egg. This makes it nice and sticky. I want to make sure to coat all the sides. And then some breadcrumbs. See how nicely that coats? Old classic breading technique will get the job done every time. There we go. I'm just going to go ahead and set that off to the side because we'll be frying that off after we get the chicken in the oven. And I need to go wash my hands. There we go. Got all cleaned up, just in time to get sticky again. So the next thing you're going to want to do is stuff and prepare the chicken breasts. We have a little andouille sausage, we have some brie cheese, and we have some trinity. Now, if you're not familiar with trinity, I'd like to introduce you to trinity. It's a combination of celery, green bell peppers, and red, uh, not red onions, it can be red onions, but onions, um, in approximately equal portions, diced up, and it's kind of the flavor foundation of Cajun and Creole cuisine. Just kind of want to mix them together. The trinity plays the same part in the flavor profile as, say, the mirepoix in classical French cooking. So I have two chicken breasts here. Now I've already butterflied them. And you can see that they're bone free, but still skin on. Now skin's very important here because you want to take a little bit of butter, about a half tablespoon per breast or whatever part of chicken you're using. This recipe works well with uh, thighs and legs, really just about anything. Kind of flatten it out and stuff the butter underneath the skin. As the chicken bakes, the fat from the skin mixes with the fat from the butter and it just makes this amazing. If you've ever tried stuffing butter underneath the skin of a chicken, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, please give it a whirl. <clears throat> so now the next part is to open up the inside of the breast, sprinkle in a little bit of the trinity, a few slices of nice andouille sausage, and about an ounce worth of brie cheese sliced up nice. And kind of stuff the brie as far back in the chicken as you can because it is going to melt and some of it will run out. 
So if you stuff it as far back in the breast or the open part of the meat that you're dealing with as possible, you'll have better results. Now draw the chicken breast closed and add in a few toothpicks to kind of help it stay sealed. Stretch the skin down too so that that stays stretched out over the breast as it bakes. I'm just going to do the same thing over here with the other one. Both of my breasts are ready to go, so I'm just gonna give my hands a quick little wash here. And let's complete the flavor of the delicious breading. So you're gonna need a couple tablespoons of really good Cajun spice. I'd like to thank Mr. Pete's for this delicious sample. We love it. It's so good. It's got a nice smoky flavor, a little sweetness, and it's not overly salty. And you're really going to want to put a lot of it in there. So season up the flour layer with a nice generous amount, at least a couple tablespoons. Kind of fold the mix into the flour, make the flour nice and seasoned and rich. And then you want to take the chicken and move it delicately and carefully from the flour to the egg to the breadcrumbs and back to the baking pan. Plop it in on one side, plop it in on the other, maybe add a little sprinkle around the edges. Give it a nice amount of flour on there. Give it a little love in the egg wash. Make sure that the flour is all completely moistened, for that is what will help the breadcrumbs to stick perfectly to it. And I prefer to use unseasoned breadcrumbs because I really like the flavors of the spices to show through. A little sprinkle with the fingers, make sure there's a nice, coast, nice crusting on top. And then back to the baking pan. And it's just the same procedure with the next one. So this sort of breading technique is very classical. It's used by chefs in just about every major restaurant out there. Sometimes people get creative with the types of flours or breadcrumbs or even the type of egg that they're going to use. Sometimes they'll make a fancy egg wash with extra additives in it. Same principle will always get the job done. Flour, egg, breadcrumbs. Make sure they're nice and thick on there. Looks like I'm going to be using up all the breadcrumbs. That's perfect. Back to the baking pan. Or wash the hands. There we go, nice clean hands. Always washing the hands after handling meat. And then pop the chicken into the oven. I have the temperature set at 375 degrees. And these little breasts probably need to roast for about 45 minutes to an hour. And I almost forgot my garnish. Use whatever little slices of andouille sausage you might have left over from the link that you're using and just lay them across the top of the chicken. They'll get lovely and crispy and dehydrated and delicious. Hi, 
everyone, it's Wendy, and I just wanted to tell you about my e-cookbook, Date Night at Home Recipes for Two. There's over 80 original recipes with nice detailed instructions and plenty of tips and hints. It sells for $7.99. Go to our website, hotkitchenonline.com, and follow the links. It's available for your computer or your Kindle. So now the chicken's in the oven. Let's get some appetizers going. Now you should have already breaded the saganaki. So the next step is just to pan fry it. Pretty straightforward here. Nice little pool of heated oil. I really like using olive oil for this for its delicate flavor and nutritional values. Also, you can fry it at a lower temperature, which generally means a little less fat absorption. Let's give it a couple minutes on each side. I like to give them a little bit of movement. That way the oil finds its way underneath all the crumbs. And just lightly fry it off. See that we're developing a little bit of a golden brown color around the bottom and some of the cheese is bubbling out. So that's my cue to go ahead and give these guys a little flip. Mmm, -hmm. look at that pretty color. A saganaki is traditionally something you would find in a Greek restaurant. That's usually a fried cheese, although I've seen it refer to other fried items as well. And who doesn't love fried cheese? So I thought with all the brie cheese that you would be buying for the chicken, why not make a dynamite appetizer out of it? Kind of move it around the pan a little bit. You may find that you want to fry the other sides too, that's fine. I'm just finishing these off here. Look at how delicious that is. I'm just gonna place them on a paper towel. This is one of the few times I use actual paper towels. It's just nothing like it to actually drain off the grease. And if you'll notice, you can see that the presentation side should be the first side that you fried off because it looks so much better than all the other sides. Now season these up with just a touch of that Cajun seasoning. I'm using the Mr. Pete's again because it's so yummy. And do your seasoning while it's still really hot. Allow them to cool down for just a moment before you plate. All right, yeah, these feel cool enough to handle. It's very important, because hot cheese is hot. All right, so anyway, just take a couple nice little wedges, put them on a plate. I have four nice little butter crackers set up. And I'm also gonna add in a little fruit, because fruit and cheese are just so lovely together. So I have half a kiwi here. It's gonna kind of shingle it out. Like that. It's a slippery little guy. Pretty. And then a little dollop of the jelly that you used back on top of the saganaki for a little color and another little hit of sweetness. And there's your appetizers. Wow, it looks so good in here. Oh, hey. Oh, hi. Mm, hi. Good mm, day. Look at this. Mm -hmm. A little saganaki here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And bye. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. And yum. <laughs> Absolutely. Mmm. There's a little kiwi there to go with it, too. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's go. Okay. And here is our mise en place for the Cajun potato hash. So let's get started first by adding the andouille sausage to a nice hot saute pan. I want to render all the fat out of there and then add in about another half cup or so of Trinity. Give a little toss here. What you're waiting to see is for the fat to start rendering out of the sausage. Let's see how we're doing here. Got a nice little caramelization going on on the andouille sausage. You can see that the Trinity is nice and glossy. That means quite a bit of fat has rendered out. It's 
perfect. So let's move on to the next step. Now you're gonna add two teaspoons Cajun spice, one half teaspoon Italian herbs, a half teaspoon salt, and a half teaspoon of paprika. And for good measure, about a tablespoon of butter. Wanna work that in there, give it a nice little toss, let the spices coat everything, let the butter come in contact with all the spices because when spices fry, they sort of activate. And then the next thing to do is to add in your chopped up potatoes. I used four small red potatoes. Any sort of potato will work. I just want the equivalent serving of two. Maybe a little extra for some yummy leftovers. Nice little toss. Mmm, mmm. And the rest of it's pretty straightforward from here. You just let it fry, you toss it periodically, and when the potatoes are soft and golden and crispy, everything's ready. Well, this hash is coming along very nicely. Got a nice little bit of browning going on here. Now let us enhance the flavor, just touch more with a few yummy drops of Tabasco sauce. Few things say Cajun cuisine, like andouille sausage and Tabasco. Now let's move on to the wilted mustard greens. So you're gonna start by building up a little roux. So you need a tablespoon of butter, melt it together with about a tablespoon of flour. You just wanna work this together over low to medium low heat Get them all combined. The roux is going to thicken up the cream beautifully so that it just coats the mustard greens. So when we go to plate this, we're going to put these delicious creamy mustard greens on top of the hash. Kind of like a dinner time take on the old poached egg over the hash. Now that I'm seeing that the flour and the butter are happy together, we're gonna to go ahead and add some aromatics. We got three, count them, three cloves of sliced garlic, and about a tablespoon or so of chopped up onion. And we're just gonna work these in with the roux and give them a chance to soften up. You're gonna to wanna to cook the roux for five to 10 minutes or until the vegetables are tender. And the roux has progressed very nicely. I'm really pleased to see that I didn't make it very golden or anything. It's still fairly white, which is perfect because we want the delicate contrast in flavor between the mustard greens and the hash. So let's go ahead and add in just a little touch of acidity. We'll squeeze a lemon. It's gonna help brighten up the flavors and enhance all the goodness. Oops. And let's also add in a little bit of brininess. I have about a dozen capers. Just give those just a second here to come together. Now let's fold in all these mustard greens. Now this is one bunch of mustard greens. All chopped down a little bit. It's just gonna take a couple of turns here to get them to wilt down. Like any green, they're gonna wilt under the heat. Kind of wanna fold them and work them allow them sort of equal contact time, if you will, with the cooking surface. That's why you see me using two spoons. I love serving wilted greens with a meal. It's a really fun way to add a whole bunch of nutrition and flavor, and in my world, most importantly, color. Now, you've seen me work with spinach a lot, and I've worked with chard a few times, but I do believe this is the first time I've demonstrated mustard greens. In their raw state, they have a nice little punch. When they're cooked down a little bit, that punch kind of intensifies yet sweetens at the same time. It's a really nice contrast to the richness of the andouille sausage. I think your sweetie's gonna really dig on it. So these fibrous little greens are cooking down, which means I'm gonna go ahead and keep adding more in amounts that I can handle here. Once you get it started, the next couple batches that you add in go a lot faster. So just keep on tossing it allowing it contact with the heat, giving it time to do its thing. 
Meanwhile, you're totally coating it with that roux and the butter, all infused with the delicious flavors of the garlic and the onion. Oh, ho, oh, oh, this is gonna be good. So this is all of the greens all worked in. You can see they're wilting down very nicely now. So now I'm gonna add in my half cup of heavy cream. Now this meal is definitely not health food here, friends. This is, this is Cajun cuisine. However, it is absolutely delicious. Once in a while, it's okay to just go crazy with it and not feel guilty about the fat. Mm-hmm. Just kind of fold this in. You wanna get that cream to coat each and every leaf. I'm gonna wilt down a little bit more than that. How bright and pretty that's turning. And you can see how the roux that you made is working with the cream to just coat every leaf. It's pretty cool stuff. So at this point, I'm just gonna kind of spread it out in the pan, giving it that contact time that it needs with the pan. And I'm gonna get the chicken out of the oven. It's helpful to let the chicken rest for a few minutes before you serve it. Well, this is looking pretty happy, so now I'm just gonna give it a quick little taste test here to check the seasonings. Let's grab a little bit here off my spoon. There we go. Mmm. Ooh, that's really nice. Now, if you like, you can finish it off with a little bit of freshly grated nutmeg and season it to taste with salt and pepper. There's quite a bit of pepper in the hash, so in my preparation, I'm just gonna opt for a little salt. Get that folded in there. Ooh. And then take it off the heat. Let's plate this up. Potatoes go down first. I always like to start with my starches when I'm plating for some reason. Creamy, yummy, zesty mustard greens right on top of that. And let's bring in the chicken. Make sure you scrape up the yummy cheese underneath. Let's plate that bad boy right up next to the hash. Mm. Go ahead and pull out those toothpicks now. You can just hear how crunchy that chicken is. And that's one delicious Cajun style feast for two, made by you. Now pair this up with a nice white wine. I'd say just a Pinot Gris. You know, you might even want to try it with a nice amber beer. Anyway, call in your sweetie. Honey, I'm gonna get you dinner. Hi, Hansen. Hi. Dinner. Right, Cajun cuisine. But not just any dinner, date night dinner. Cajun <laughs> 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 Yeah, me too. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. I think you like this one quite a bit. I'm sure I'm going to. I don't know how you could. This is such a hot kitchen. <laughs> So thanks for joining me in my hot kitchen tonight. Have fun turning up the heat in your kitchen. And I'll see y'all next week. Night night.
pet the kitties. <laughs>